Good morning, my dear. I'm Dr. Alam Musbah, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine, Mansoura University. Today, I wanted to discuss with you cord presentation and the prolapse. So, what we wanted to discuss today in this lecture? The definitions of cord presentation and the prolapse, its incidence, the risk factors, how to diagnose and its clinical presentation and management and prognosis. Let us first describe how important it's called the prolapse because it is life threatening conditions affecting the fetal life. And you should know that the perinatal mortality rate reaching about 9%. And this is a very high mortality rate as regard the fetus death okay due to fetal asphyxia which occurs as a complication of cord prolapse so what is the cord presentation and what is the cord prolapse and how to differentiate between both according to the recent guidelines please lock to this picture please on the right side here this is a case of cord prolapse cord prolapse means descent of the umbilical cord below the presenting part through the cervix down to the vagina okay so the cord below the presenting part and descend through the cervix down to the vagina and maybe outside and towards what about this is a cold cord prolapse what about cord presentation Cord presentation as a picture in the middle here. The umbilical cord lie between the presenting part and the cervix, but it doesn't pass through the cervix. Okay. Whether the membrane is intact or ruptured. So the umbilical cord lies between the presenting part and the cervix, whether the membrane is intact or ruptured. Of course, in cord prolapse, the membrane is ruptured. And the cord descend below the presenting part through the cervix and down to the vagina. And in cord presentation, the cord lies between the presenting part and the cervix, whether the membrane is intact or ruptured, according to the recent definition by the Royal by the Royal College. Okay, okay. We have two types of cord presentation. One called occult. Or occult and one called ovary. This is the occult type and this is the ovary type. What is the difference? In occult, in occult type, the umbilical cord alongside the presenting part, as you see here. So you will find the umbilical cord alongside the presenting part. This is the head and this is the umbilical cord. While in ovary type, the umbilical cord below the presenting part or beyond the fetal presenting part. So this is post pictures of cord presentation, the middle one and to the left side, and but this is called occult and and this is called and this is called the over type. Okay. Another expression called cord expression cord expression means that the cord prolapse while the cervix is fully dilated so if there is cord prolapse descending to the vagina and that outside the enteritis it's called cord expression when the cervix is fully dilated okay what about the incidence the overall incidence range between 0.1 to 0.6 percent while this instance increased much with malpresentation like breach presentation which reach 1% and also in transverse lie presentation it is higher instance. Also you should know that instance increase was multiple gestation like trans, trabulus and so on. What about the risk factors? Risk factors we can divide them into three groups either maternal, 
or fetal or obstetrical procedures. Maternal include polyhydramnus, abnormal placentation like placenta brevia and vasa brevia, return labor and small uh, weight, birth weight, pelvic deformities of the contract pelvis, prolonged labor, previous cord prolapse, and second one, and multiparity. While the fetal risk factors include malpresentation like breach, transverse lie, unstable lie. Also, non-engaged head, high head, high presenting form, fetal congenital anomalies, also abnormally long umbilical cord. What about the obstetrical procedures like internal podalic version or external cephalic version or amniotomy or fetal scalp electrode application or this impaction of the fetal head or manual rotation of the fetal head or application of forceps or vacuum or cervical ripening using the balloon caster or induction of labor. All these are risk factors for or the prolapse. What about diagnosis and the presentation? Antenatal diagnosis of cord presentation by routine ultrasound examination, especially with color Doppler. As you see in this picture, this is two examples here of presentation and the prolapse. Here is a prolapse. This is the umbilical cord inside the cervix down to the vagina. Below the presenting part, which is the fetal head. This is the fetal head. This is the bladder. This is the cervix. And this is the umbilical cord. And this is the cervix. So they sent through the cervix to the vagina in this picture. This is cord prolapse. A while in this picture, this is another picture of cord presentation. This is the fetal head. This is the umbilical cord. And this is the cervix. So here, the umbilical cord lies between the head and the cervix. This is called cord presentation. And of course, in this picture, this is cord relapse in the cervix picture here. Okay, cord relapse can present with sudden bradycardia or deceleration of the fetal heart rate where there has previously been normal trace. Suppose you have a patient in labor and you are using CTG and everything was fine, fetal heart rate was fine, and suddenly there is bradycardia. You should put in your mind there may be prolapse cool, and there should be re-examination and try to diagnose it. Also, the abnormal fetal heart changes will typically occur after rupture of membrane or an obstetric intervention that dislodges the presenting form. As a continuation for diagnosis and the presentation, you will do BV examination, speculum examination, you will see the cord and you will feel it as rube like and you can feel the pulsation between contractions indicating the viability of the fetus and if there is no pulsation the cord you should confirm by using ultrasound and Doppler So, you, you will feel it by BV examination. Also, as, as you see in the picture here, you, you will find the membrane rupture and the presenting part is high. Up. So, all these help you in diagnosis. Sometimes you see by your eyes the umbilical cord through the vagina outside and through this also. What about prevention of cord prolapse? During antenatal care, antenatal diagnosis of cord presentation by ultrasound examination or color Doppler ultrasound may be discovered accidentally. However, ultrasound is not that highly sensitive. It is, is has no high sensitivity and the high, has no high specificity. However, it can be considered for selective screening of women with breech presentation at term who are considering a vaginal birth. So if you are planning to do vaginal birth for a case with breech presentation, please 
do ultrasound and try to search if there is crude representation or not because it is important. In the setting of incidental finding of crude representation in routine ultrasound, you should do appropriate antenatal counseling and should arrange by senior obstetrician to discuss with the patient all the risks of cord presentation. Okay? Further ultrasound later on to assess the status of the cord presentation may be appropriate depending on the gestational age. Okay, how to prevent cord prolapse? In the event of transverse or unstable lie, elective admission to antenatal ward after 37 weeks gestational age could be offered. Also, admit the patient with pre-labor, preterm rupture of membrane for non-cephalic presentation. Also, it is important if you are doing artificial rupture of membrane, it shouldn't be undertaken when the cord is palpated underneath the presenting part. Also, if the presenting part is noted to be high and the mobile, an artificial rupture of membrane should be avoided because if you are trying to do artificial rupture of membrane while the presenting part is high, there is high incidence to the center of the cord to be a case of prolapse of cord. And it is an emergency situation, as you know. Vaginal examination in case of ruptured membrane and the non-engaged presenting part carries a risk of upward displacement and subsequent cord prolapse. Upward pressure on the presenting part should be kept to minimum and the use of assistance to apply fundal stabilization should be considered. So if you are doing BV to feel the presenting part, and the presenting part is high, try to minimize any upward pressure because you may accidentally be the cause of prolapse of cord because when some upward pressure to the presenting part may lead to the center of the cord. So try not to do upward pressure and try to take help from the assistant to stabilize the fundus to prevent occurrence of this. Okay, what about the management? It depends on what is the condition of the membrane. Is it ruptured or not? What is the dilatation of the cervix? It is, is it closed? Uh, sorry, partially dilated or completely dilated or closed in case of poor presentation? What is the viability of the fetus? Is the baby is loving or dead? Okay. In case of cord presentation, in contracted pelvis and the fetus is mature, please do elective caesarean section. Okay? Okay. If the cervix is partially dilated, try to prevent rupture of membrane by putting the patient in knee chest position as in this picture or same the position, exaggerated left lateral position. Why? Because I'm trying to avoid pressure of the presenting part on the umbilical cord. Also, I can insert saline solution 500cc inside the bladder to avoid compression of the presenting part above the umbilical cord. This is the position of the patient knee chest or same position, this is same position also. What about if the cervix fully dilated? The fetus is delivered immediately by rupture of membrane and vacuum extraction or forceps delivery if the head is engaged, so long as there is no other obstetric contraindication for vaginal delivery. Also, in case of breach presentation, rupture of membrane and the can do breach extraction under anesthesia. If you are experienced in delivery of the breach and there is no other contraindication for vaginal delivery, or you may need caesarean section if the head is not engaged or if the above measure fails. 
Okay. What about in case of cord prolapse? The prolapsed cord is ignored and the liver is allowed to proceed under the following condition. When the baby is dead, and you should counsel your patient that the baby is dead and we can continue for vaginal delivery. Or when the baby is known to be abnormal like an encephaly and has no chance for survival, you, can, you should counsel your patient also about that and to continue for vaginal delivery. When the fetus is so premature, suppose your baby about 20 weeks or less and the chance for continue living outside is so hard, so you should counsel your patient and they may continue vaginal delivery. But if the baby have, has a chance for life, the baby is loving, you should do all measures to avoid compression of the cord, like in this picture. By position, like knee chest position, or same position, left lateral position, try during BV to push the head away from the cord to minimize the cord compression. Give the patient some drugs that cause relaxation and cause to colises like terbutalin, subcutaneous, 0.25 milligram or intravenous tocolysis. Give the patient oxygen, eight liter per minute. It's very important. Continu continuous CTG is important also. You can also, if you still have the time, you can instill saline inside the bladder through police caster 500 milliliter why because this full bladder will push the presenting part away from the umbilical cord also don't forget to discontinue any oxytocin, oxytocin infusion if in progress if, if if you are using oxytocin infusion please stop it stop it immediately okay and in this picture this is the method how to do or how to decrease cord compression by positioning the chest and send the position by bb and pushing the presenting part away from the cord by filling the bladder with saline 500 milliliter Okay, what about if the service is incompletely dilated? The caesarean section is a treatment of choice and this is an emergency and should be done very emergency. Okay, and don't forget to empty the bladder before doing caesarean section. It is not advised to replace the cord if protruding from the introitus as it can provoke vasospasm and subsequent fetal bradycardia. The minimal handling of loops of cord lying outside the vagina is advised. This is in the recent guidelines. While in the past, we, we did warm towel around the cord and try to insert it inside the vagina. However, recently we found that it is better to minimize handling of the cord, so don't use warm towel or use handling of the cord if it is outside the vagina, because you may provoke vasospasm and cause more fetal bradycardia and asphyxia. Please remember this. Okay, cervix fully dilated, cephalic presentation, head low down in the pelvis. So you can do vacuum extraction or forceps according to the experience and the, which is more suitable of them and if there is no other obstetric contraindication. In case of shoulder presentation and the cervix is fully dilated, you should do cesarean section. Breaches 
presentation you may need to do resection or you may do breach extraction under general anesthesia however cesarean section considered the best treatment if it can be performed without delay this is the most important point what about anesthetic and suture management? The aim should be to deliver the baby as soon as possible. As we said, it is an emergency situation and use the anesthesia which is safe for both mother and the fetus. The majority of cesarean section where there is cord prolapse, there is no epidural in situ, are performed under general anesthesia. So, the general anesthesia is better so long as I didn't before use epidural anesthesia during early labor. But if there is epidural anesthesia, I can continue cesarean section with using this regional anesthesia. Okay? If I am in need for spinal anesthesia, I can do it in lateral position. Okay? And do it as soon as possible. And you can use it when the fetal heart rate is acceptable and no distress. Don't forget to have bird arterial and venous cord blood samples immediately after birth to exclude intrapartum related hypoxic ischemic brain damage. To exclude this hypoxia, you should have arterial and venous blood gases. Okay, neonate born alive following cord prolapse are highly likely to require resuscitation and you should do all measures for resuscitation by a pediatrician and do a bar score for the baby what about the prognosis as regard the mother the maternal danger is caused only by traumatic attempt to save the child what about the fetus? As we said before, perinatal mortality reaching up to 9%. The prognosis is more worse with condition leading to more cord compression. What are the conditions in which there is more cord compression? In primary gravity than multiple, generally contracted than flat pelvis, partially than fully dilated cervix, cephalic presentation than breach of shoulder anterior than posterior position of the core and lastly the time passed between prolapse and delivery if it is increased the prognosis is more bad lastly you should have post birth documentation you should ensure documentation for everything in this event the, the, the time of arrival of the patient the methods used to avoid compression of the core the, the fetus was viable or not at the gestational age on admission. The method of delivery, vaginal or caesarean, or if there is instrumental delivery should be described. The APGAR score, the CPG record during delivery should be documented also. And consider the use of cord prolapse management for as in this picture, and this is the last slide. Thank you. I'm Dr. Alam Usbah, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine, Mansoura University.